Hey everyone, and welcome back to Satisfactory News. In this video, I'll be talking about how power works in the game as of Update 7. I made a similar video back in Update 4, and a couple details have changed since then. So even if you're experienced with Satisfactory, there may be something to learn in this video. But let's start with the basics in case you're brand new to the game. And the first question really is, what is power? Power is a resource generated in the game that is used to make every other machine in the game function. The big difference between power and other resources is that you can't store or buffer power in the same way as other resources, although more on that later. Power is generated in specific power generation buildings, and is transported to your other buildings through power lines and power poles. Power can also be carried by railways and through train stations. Unlike items on a belt, power does not need to move through the power lines. As soon as you connect a machine to power, it will work no matter how far away the power source is. There is no voltage or resistance or transformers like in real life. Power is the same no matter where along the line it is. So the only factor you need to worry about is how much of it you're producing and how much you need to power your factory. Power is measured in megawatts, but these units really don't matter in the context of the game. There are no other power units in the game. To reiterate what I said in the last video, MW might as well stand for Melon Wiggles. Each power generator has a set amount of power that it produces per minute, assuming that it receives enough input materials. The machine is either producing power or it's not. It won't produce less power if it's not getting enough fuel to burn, it will just go completely idle. But if these machines do have enough resources coming their way, they will produce a predictable and normal amount of power. One exception is geothermal generators, which fluctuate how much power they produce, and biomass burners, which scale to power demand. Therefore, they will actually burn fuel slower if there is less need for power. Each production machine has a set amount of power that it requires per minute, but it will not consume power if it's idle. That's why it's helpful to see the maximum possible power draw of your grid, and you can see that by reading the power graph. To see the power graph, interact with any power pole in your world. But in order to see stats about your entire world's power, you will need this pole to be connected in some way to every power generator and production building in your world. Otherwise, you'll only see stats about what this power pole is attached to in some way. And here's a quick tip for new players during your first hours of play in the game. When you're getting started with biomass burners, connect them together using a network of power poles so their total power production can be combined. The consumption line shows how much power is currently being consumed by your grid. Capacity is how much power your factory could produce if all of the power generators were operating normally. Production is how much power is currently being produced. These two numbers will often be the same, but having biomass burners on your grid could cause them to be different. Max consumption is how much power your grid could consume if every machine was operational at once. This number will be lower than the current consumption if you have machines that are backed up with resources or are waiting for resources. Power trips can occur if your consumption surpasses your production. This will completely shut down the power grid and you'll need to manually restart it by interacting with a power pole and throwing the switch. Production machines will not compensate for a lack of power. They demand a certain amount and if they can't get it, the whole system overloads and shuts down. When a power trip happens, you'll know. There's an ominous power failure sound that plays no matter where you are in the world, and an on-screen notification will come along with it. This will generally mean that you have built too many production buildings and they are drawing too much power, or that you have a problem in your power production system and it's producing an inconsistent amount of power. Check your power generators to make sure nothing was set up incorrectly. If you've just been building without checking your power capacity, you can simply build more power generators to compensate. You might have to jumpstart the system though, Consider disconnecting the rest of your factory from the power generators, and building some biomass generators to supply some additional power to the system. Once everything is up and running again, you're free to connect the factory to the grid. Thankfully, power switches make this process pretty easy. Power switches are a buildable console you can place between two power cables, and they allow you to cut off the power between two areas without having to deconstruct anything. You can also label the power switch. So for example, you could have a power switch next to your coal generators, and you could disconnect the grid with a simple flip of a switch. Hostile creatures are scared away by active machines, so for the most part they won't spawn near an active base. However, if the power is out for too long, the hostile creatures might start coming back. So be sure to keep a Xenobasher on you in case of emergencies. Overclocking will affect the production rate and power consumption of a machine. Machines can be overclocked to up to 250%, 
by putting a power shard into them for each 50% chunk of power you want to use. They can also be underclocked down to below 100% in order to save on power at the cost of slower production. Power shards are made from power slugs, which can be found while exploring the world of Satisfactory. Overclocking does not adjust the power at the same rate as production, however. So let's take a look at a constructor making iron plates. At a normal 100% clock speed, a constructor will produce 20 iron plates per minute and use 4 megawatts. At 200% clock speed, it will produce 40 iron plates. In other words, 200% of the base amount. Production scales in a linear fashion like this. However, the power will not scale the same. Instead of doubling to 8 megawatts, a constructor overclocked to 200% will draw 10 megawatts. On the other end of the spectrum, underclocking will save power at a higher rate. Underclocking to 50% will not bring the power down to 2 megawatts, it will actually bring it down to 1.6. Here's a chart showing how much power you will draw at each clock speed. The numbers specifically apply to the constructor, but the shape of the chart can be applied to everything. There is actually a formula for determining the power consumption of a machine at any clock speed, which I'll put on the screen now, courtesy of the amazing people that keep the Satisfactory Wiki up to date. One note about overclocking production buildings is that it saves on space and building materials, because you have to build less machines. But if you have the space and materials to spare, just building more production buildings will be more energy efficient and draw less power than overclocking. Most power generators can also be overclocked, and overclocking for them is pretty straightforward, as the power produced is proportional to their clock speed. So for example, a coal generator can produce 75 megawatts at 100%, and 150 megawatts at 200%. This makes overclocking your power generators easy to understand and calculate. One of the main reasons I'm making this video is that when I made the previous power guide for update 4, the overclocking formula was drastically different. The update 7 changes make overclocking power generators much easier and more efficient. Now let's look at the different types of power generators. You'll start the game with biomass burners. These are the only power generators that need to be filled by hand with organic material like leaves. But you'll soon grow out of them relatively quickly, and you really should focus on doing research into power so you can improve or automate your system, especially since hand filling biomass burners takes time away from building your factory and exploring. Your first goal before getting to the next tier of power should be solid biofuel, which can be acquired in tier two of research. This craftable fuel is much more efficient to burn for power and will give you more time to explore and research. But this will next bring you to coal power, which will also require you to find water. This is one of the first big challenges in Satisfactory, as you need to locate a place on the map with enough water to support your coal generators that is also near enough to a source of coal. Then after coal is fuel power. This requires quite a lot of setup as you need to turn oil into fuel, which is a multi-step process. But it's well worth it, as fuel generators provide double the power of a single coal generator. The biggest jump is late game nuclear power. Nuclear power plants produce over 16 times as much power as fuel generators do, but require a ton of different resources with a huge production chain. It will also add radioactive waste to your world that you'll need to deal with in some way. One way of dealing with the waste is to put it through the particle accelerator. This machine can turn nuclear waste into plutonium pellets, which go into the production of plutonium fuel rods. These can be burned in nuclear power plants as well, and then they'll produce plutonium waste, which will also need to be stored. However, you can put plutonium fuel rods into the awesome sink for tickets, or burn them as vehicle fuel. Using either of these methods can result in a waste-free, satisfactory playthrough. The power storage is the only building in the game that lets you store and buffer power. When power storage is connected to your power grid, your power generators will produce excess power if able, and they'll store it in the power storage, up to 100 megawatts in each. It will take one hour to fully charge a power storage, and when the power grid can no longer support your factory, the power storages will start draining instead of causing an instant trip in the whole system. You'll get a notification about the power status, and this will give you time to address any power issues and expand your power generators. You can see the status of your batteries at any time by interacting with a power pole and looking at the charge indicator. If your power system is set up perfectly and you're always aware of how much power you have available versus how much you need, you won't need to use these buildings, but they are incredibly useful if you like to expand without double checking your capacity, or as a buffer just in case something goes wrong. Alright, that is the complete power guide for Satisfactory Update 7. There were several changes to power in this latest update, so even if you're a veteran of the game, hopefully you learned something new. 
And if you found this video helpful, I'd love if you could like and subscribe because it helps me out a lot. Otherwise, I hope to see you in the next video.